Hello everyone, welcome to a simple lecture on Funky Trees. Today we're going to talk about uh, having single variable output to multiple variables. So what exactly are we doing by this? Um, what I'm trying to say here is that we're trying to have this single variable, um, variable being the custom variables that have been added uh, in 1.11, uh, currently in beta. What we can do with these variables is obviously input a custom function and also we can have uh, buttons or switches affect these variables. But what we want to do now is because buttons are limited to a single variable, they can only have one single uh, variable dictated by their input ID. But um, because we want sometimes we want buttons to perform multiple functions, um, we can have a very simple method uh, that I like to call single variable out to multiple variables in order to have achieve that uh, usage case. So uh, what uses do we have for these? Um, obviously we can have multiple functions activate at once so we can press a single button to activate multiple subsystems uh, or we can also have a single button act as a reset button that will uh, let's say we have some sort of uh, display that has multiple values and if we press this button, uh, we can have these all reset to some specified default value. Uh, let's just, for convenience sake, we can see that these all, we want all, all these become zero. Then we can do that using this method. So how do we do this? Um, what we can do uh, to do this is uh, create something called uh, an activator variable. Um, so what we want to do is um, have our um, single our main uh, activator button. So this would be the um, activator buttons for the multiple functions or either the reset button. So um, if we create this um, reset or activator uh, button, uh, we want to change this input ID to whatever we want to call our activator variable. Uh, for convenience sake, I'll call this activator. And um, we also want to set this to probably either once uh, for the input behavior or continuous. This allows the activator variable to be set to the uh, default value of likely one um, whenever we press it and remain at that state. Um, uh, whichever you use, once or continuous, is dependent on how you apply your uh, system. So uh, that is up to you. You should reference the uh, documentation available to see which is the better type of um, behavior to use. But um, once we've created this activator variable, what we want to do next is basically reference the variable activator this in other functions. So if we have a, let's say, we have an engine. Um, jet engine part and we want to set the activation group for this to activator then if we have um, this button we can press this button this activator button to activate our engine we can also have it uh, linked to some I don't know a light a beacon light that shows your engine on status and if this is also set to activator, we can have both of these activate all at once using a single button. So in short, it, it can use it as a um, pseudo activation group. But um, the first usage case is what I just demonstrated with a single simple multiple out um, where you have a single activator variable and you reference it in multiple different systems to activate all of these at once. Um, you can also have differing logic using the activator variable. So for example, this first element of this multiple out case might be a single engine with simply the activation group uh, bound to activator, but we can also have it be like a smooth function and we can have, let's say, uh, smooth, uh, let's say clamp 01, activator, and then we can set it to like one. So if we want, if we do this, then um, the function, uh, we should also floor it. 
Well, basically what this might do is um, if we turn on activator using the button or switch, uh, what it will do is it will take one second for this function to fully reach the value of one. So for example, in the case we demonstrated earlier, we might have some engine uh, activate immediately after the button or switch for activator is pressed, or we can have some other system, let's say the engine ready light or something, um, activate only after um, one second after the activator button has been pressed. So this is pretty useful for integrated systems where you have multiple things going on, um, but you want a single control to control all of them. So the other usage case is a reset function. So for example, if you have some sort of data collecting device, let me draw this better, that records your, let's say, speed at multiple times since the game has started. Um, then we can have like 100, 200, 300, 400. But you want to, for some reason, uh, reset all this with some press of a button and like begin this whole process again. But then how, how, do, how would we do this reset? So what you want to do is um, have these functional elements all be bound to some variable. So let's just, let's just call this, uh, let's just call this uh, speed one. And this would be speed, speed two, speed three, speed four. So what you can do is if this variable is called activator, what you can do is create some uh, reset or override variables. So what we want to do is, let's say, when you open up your variables menu, you're going to have all of these variables in there. Um, so we would have speed one, speed two, like this, and then you'll it'll be bound to some sort of function that you created to record these. Now, all these should have a priority of zero. What happens now is that you also want a copy of these variables below or above, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it's likely better to have the uh, same set of variables above. So we would have all of this, speed one, speed two up to speed four, and then we would have the, the value for the reset. So let's call, let's say if we want all this to become zero, um, when, you re when you use the reset, reset button, then we've all set all these to zero. So now you have a copy of all your functional variables um, with a value equ equating to the default value, this, in this case being zero. And also what you want to do is set a higher priority for these. For example, so in this case, we had a higher priority of zero. So if, if we want to set a higher priority for this, we could set it to like one. So if you do all of this, if we set all of these with these reset override variables with a value of uh, higher priority, what we can do now is um, also set the activator, activator, uh, let's spell that right, activator. So um, this is XML property. Um, you can set it to any other thing you, you would normally do with activation group in other um, usage cases. But uh, what we can do is set our activator to our activator variable. So when our activator variable becomes true, so that is when it's pressed, um, activator, the variable activator will become one, and this will become one. So our activator is turned on. At these turn, that means it will turn on this entire set of override variables. And what that does is, since it has a higher priority, um, each of these override the values of the functional, like uh, original, uh, variables we had. And this way, um, if we turn on the reset button, we simply override all the existing variables with the override variables. And in this case, what it would do is remove all these values we had and then reset them to zero. These all get transferred over to here because they have a higher priority and these override these. So this is probably one of the more useful cases um, of the uh, multiple out uh, method. And uh, what else we can do? So for example, if we wanted to create some sort of calculator and how calculators have a clear function. So if we had some calculated value, let's say like 
we did one plus one. And we, it gave up two. So if we wanted to reset this all and perform a new calculation or something, you could have this activate this bound to an activator variable, this bound to like let's say term one, this bound to term two, and then this bound to like output. We could have a set of these exact same variables with a higher priority. Let's assume these all have a priority of zero. Um, we could also have a, a same set of variables, term one, term two, and output. But we all set them equal to value of zero. Uh, we have a higher priority. For all of these, we should have a activator. It's an activator variable. And when our uh, activator variable gets turned on by pressing that button, this becomes one. Uh, this whole set of override variables becomes true. And these all override whatever value was originally in the lower priority functional variables. And this is how you can do reset. So I just provided two examples of um, how you can use a uh, reset system. And that's about it. Um, there is, um, that's pretty much what we can do with these um, systems. Uh, this is a very simple method. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with buttons now. So hopefully this helped you. Um, uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.